Welcome. Welcome to Vanadium. This is Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. Life is punctuated by rites of passage. Everyone, in every period in history, in every culture on Earth, shares some kind of experience like this. These events, these milestones, divide life into distinct phases and help shape a person's future. In the world of scholastics, there are big tests, exams that dictate whether you can move forward in a field or profession. These are the tests that stand between you and a future career. Sometimes failure can mean fruitless years and tens of thousands of dollars wasted, spent, without recognition. Sometimes failure at one of these exams means one's dreams must be abandoned. Some tests, even though some people on the inside might argue aren't good predictors for career success, are still tradition. These exams aren't going anywhere. The process gets handed down from generation to generation. They're part of us. In law, in the United States, there's the bar exam. It's a grueling, days-long ordeal that lawyers never forget throughout their careers. Around the world, other countries have their versions of this test for lawyers to practice. To become a medical doctor, there are written licensing board exams. Dentists go through similar procedures. All kinds of fields and professions have some kind of big test that you need to pass in order to move forward. To become an officer in Starfleet, you have to take the Kobayashi Maru test. Until automated driving finally takes over, there's the driver's test. In order to become warriors, young people in the Satari Mawe tribe in Brazil take part in a brutal ritual where they are subjected to dozens of painful bullet ant stings. To become a PhD level scientist is not without its grand challenge. Before you can even formally start your PhD research, you have to subject yourself to what's called the qualifier. It's not as well known as the bar exam, but I'll tell you firsthand that it produced some serious dysfunction, anxiety, and even nervous breakdowns in a few people I knew. Preparation for the test starts near the end of your first year of grad school. About six months before the qualifier, you decide on a research topic in your field of interest. Part of the challenge of the PhD qualifying exam is selecting the right topic, something not too broad or narrow in scope. Then it's about gathering and interpreting the available technical literature and coming up with your own assessment, with the goal being to provide the kind of insights that a proper scientist would. You'll want to be able to define the major technical questions and challenges in a field. Who are the key research players? Where do you think the research in the field is headed? Or where should it be headed? The qualifier is about providing a creative synthesis of a lot of information, being able to draw generalizations and conclusions, to come up with speculations and make predictions. The PhD qualifying exam consists of a written paper, a presentation, and an oral exam by a selected committee of academic faculty members. Sometimes the oral portion of the test can last forever. That's usually when things aren't going so well. While I was getting ready for my qualifier years ago, I heard about a chemistry student who had to sustain a six-hour oral exam before they ended up failing. There were a lot of stories going around about people who failed, but it was difficult to ever get a good idea about the actual failure rate of the qualifier. As tests go, it was steeped in mystery. The qualifier is a very interesting test in another way, too. It's not concrete. It's far from multiple choice. The directions the questions go depends on everything. Every qualifier is a unique exam. There's no way to predict what's going to happen. I remember that was a big problem for a lot of people I knew. The PhD qualifying exam is required for all doctoral students to prove their competence, understanding, and capability to analyze problems and apply their scientific skills towards solutions. The purpose is to evaluate whether the student has adequate knowledge of the discipline and whether the student is eligible 
of conducting original research. This qualifying exam is a bridge that transforms a PhD student into a PhD candidate. The qualifier is qualitative in its assessment, subjective, and merciless to failure. Usually a failure of a qualifying exam means maybe one more attempt before being kicked out of the department and in many cases never being allowed to pursue a PhD ever again. Pretty serious stakes for a test, I would say. The topic of my qualifier was related to the atomic structure at the surfaces of metal oxide crystals. I was interested in the arrangement of atoms on a perovskite crystal surface under different chemical conditions. Often the structure at a surface was different and unexpected compared to the crystal structure in the bulk. Sometimes the microscopic images of reconstructed surfaces are striking. These nanoscale crop circles are always changing into new patterns depending on environmental conditions and the crystal's thermal history. I started trying to read academic papers that were difficult to understand at first, but it slowly got easier. It seemed to take forever to understand the first paragraph of the first paper I read. It was plodding, slow, and painful to get through that first wave of review articles. But then I got better. I adapted. I developed the muscles for it. Pretty soon, I was feeling less confused and more curious. I was starting to get more and more interested in the topic. I was also nervous about facing the qualifier. And being someone who was always in my head, for the months leading up to the test, I was constantly playing through various scripts of questions and answers, the easy ones all the way through the hardest I could imagine. I had to think about the worst that could happen. The committee could ask me something that I didn't know the answer to, or worse, a question I should have but didn't predict. That was definitely possible. What were the questions I couldn't answer? I wrote them down. Then I tried to answer them. For some of them, it took a while. After some time, I was left with only questions that not only I couldn't answer, but no one in the field seemed to have the solution. I was scared that somehow the professors in my committee were somehow going to expect me to come up with something no one else in the world could. I thought that wouldn't be fair, but in this world, plenty of unfair things happen all the time. I did my best to answer the questions I came up with, but some, they remain unanswered. I was worried these would be the ones that would be probed. These unknowns to me seemed like weaknesses. I was excited about them in a way. I wanted to answer them, but I was also ashamed these unknowns existed and I was afraid they were gonna become exposed. While I prepared for my qualifier, one of these unknowns kept haunting me. A question kept coming up that I couldn't answer. No matter where I looked, no one seemed to know. It was a question scientists in the field seemed to be glossing over. I kept thinking about it. The mystery kept growing and I had a hunch, but that was it. I just hoped my committee wouldn't ask me anything about it. I was just hoping I would get lucky. Dear viewers, in this particular case, I did not get lucky. I was asked the exact question I was most afraid of. Explain something not only you, but no one else seems to understand. Well, I did my best. I told the professor in my committee that I didn't know the answer, that I only had a hunch. He asked what I would do to test my hunch. After I told him, he looked over to the other committee members and smiled. He admitted that he had no idea himself and the question was actually something that had been bothering him for years. I was fortunate. It took about an hour and a half and I had passed. After my qualifier was over, I remember how great the feeling of relief seemed. Relief is an underrated feeling in my opinion. The relief of being through that qualifier was as good as any euphoria. I had made it through to the other side, to the next stage of becoming a scientist. It was a rite of passage behind me, which is a special kind of feeling. Looking back, there were many important lessons in the qualifier that had nothing to do with science. It taught me how to deal with intimidating problems and ambiguous goals, how to manage anxiety, doubt, 
and to maintain a belief in myself through difficulty, and to continue to press on even during those times when I've lost faith. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium. Thank you.